Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today's session. Uh, my, my name is Varun. I head hospital success at MedLearn. Uh, MedLearn team is excited to connect with you all once again. It's a popular series of industry expert session where we ensure that healthcare professionals get an opportunity to interact with seasoned leaders from healthcare. I welcome you all in today's uh, webinar on Playfully Digital, that is embracing the best of both uh, the world in learning. So before I introduce our mm -hmm. esteemed speaker for today's session, we would like to give you a quick brief about MedLearn, what we are and what we do. Uh, I request Subhashree to kindly play the video for us. Thank you. Hospitals work round the clock to serve patients. Being at the centre of the action, hospital physicians and staff must confront every situation and every challenge. They must also keep up with evolving health needs and knowledge through ongoing comprehensive training programmes. What they need is a promising solution to ensure a continuous learning journey. In today's world, technology is transforming life. Be it taxis, food delivery, everything we need is at our fingertips. Education is also going through a transformation and we are at the forefront in the healthcare industry. MedLearn is a comprehensive learning, training and skill development platform incubated at Impelsys in India for healthcare professionals to attain the right mix of content, learning and skills that help them throughout their career. The platform offers a wide variety of courses that enable hospitals to meet their employee training and development needs in areas of quality compliance, soft skills and induction. The platform is designed in a way that it enables easy tracking of the real-time status of their learning progress. What's unique about this platform is that it's accessible anytime, anywhere, ensuring quality learning literally at your fingertips. Hospitals can now assign courses and track the competencies of users on specific topics with MedLearn's intelligent assessment tool, which gives them better administrative control. Its superior courseware helps hospitals provide standardized care and bridge skill gaps at every level in the organization. The healthcare professionals will also become more efficient and empowered when their learning journey progresses with ease and at their convenience. Let us unite to improve healthcare in India by spreading knowledge through technology. MedLearn. Better prepared for better care. Thank you so much, Subhashree. Uh, now I request uh, Mr. Deepak Sharma, uh, the CEO and co-founder of Medland, to kindly introduce uh, our speaker for today's session. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. I'm very pleased to have uh, Mr. Elton Nathan with us today. He's the head of learning and development, talent management engagement at Apollo Health and Lifestyle Limited. And I was talking to him earlier today. He's based in Hyderabad, but He's got a distinguished career over 24 years. He's spent time all over the country and abroad, has been very closely associated with the healthcare space in the last 10 years, and before that with aviation. If you see his experience, it spans almost every aspect that's meaningful of HR, including talent management, engagement, organizational design, cultural design. Uh, you know, his skills are multifarious accomplishments in OD, learning and development, strategic HR planning, transformation, change management. Uh, he's a true consummate comprehensive leader in the space and got very deep expertise last 10 years in healthcare. Uh, numerous awards to his credit. I can just looking at it, it's overwhelming. Last just two, three years alone, best chief learning officer, uh, golden peacock award for HR excellence business today and tagged award top 25 best companies to work for 2023. So you're very lucky and fortunate to have you with us, Mr. Elton. 
and hoping and looking forward to a amazing session on fetch Lufa. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, the complete Medlin Learn team. Uh, I'm so glad to be here, uh, and I really appreciate everyone who's taken time out to listen to me. I hope by the end of it, you'll still have the smiles on your faces as you might have right now. But uh, to begin with, I'd like to thank the Medlearn team, uh, Varun especially, Mr. Deepak, Subhashri, uh, all of you uh, have done a uh, fantabulous job in getting this thing done and, and you'll have put a lot of trust in me. So I hope I do justice in, in what I bring abroad. Uh, I definitely look forward to your question and answers at the end of the session. Uh, and without further ado, I'll share my presentation and let you know uh, my topic. Uh, just uh, one minute. I think I didn't share the sound. Yes, so that's my presentation there. I'll just uh, put that across. So today my topic is playfully digital and it's embracing the best of both worlds and learning. And uh, while the words digital create a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of uh, inquisitiveness in all of you. I would like to take a step back before I deep dive into that and let you know more about myself and uh, the organization I come from. Uh, my, I think Mr. Deepak has already done quite a lot in, in the introduction. I do have 26 years of experience. Uh, the four years, uh, in the last four years, I've been with Apollo Health and Lifestyle and I've been heading learning and development. I uh, got the additional uh, responsibilities of talent management and uh, talent engagement as the years passed by. And um, I've served in hospitality, I've served in aviation, in healthcare, and in healthcare retail as well. So that's just a little gist about myself. Uh, I would love to connect with uh, any of you on LinkedIn uh, to discuss more in case we do not have a chance to speak uh, right now, but this is my profile and uh, uh, more uh, on a later time. I belong to an organization, like I said, uh, called Apollo Health and Lifestyle. And uh, we are mainly into retail healthcare. We've got eight different businesses, as you see on the screen, uh, specialty care that comes uh, under uh, secondary care, especially with Apollo Cradle uh, and Children's Hospital. You have Apollo Fertility and Apollo Spectra. Uh, and specialty in uh, Apollo di uh, dialysis. We also have the diagnostics wing, which is Apollo diagnostics, and we primarily reach uh, everyone's neighborhood through our primary care, which is Apollo clinic, Apollo sugar, and Apollo dental. To tell you a little bit about our organization, we are the largest provider of retail healthcare right now uh, and, and, and in India. And we, we've just, we, we, our motive is to reach each community and get closer to them. So uh, uh, it, it is also said that if you're in a city and you go 500 meters radius, you'll always find an Apollo close to you. And you can try that out. I'm sure it's true. Uh, what we offer here at the HLL is uh, primary healthcare services, uh, diagnostic services and specialty care services under the wing of cradle, fertility, spectra and dialysis. And uh, our vision is to touch a billion lives. Uh, our mission is also on our uh, website, which is to adopt technology, bring healthcare services closer to the communities with the belief that uh, good primary care can bring down disease burden in the society at large. And uh, finally, this is our brand Salence, which is to be to continue to be the largest private healthcare uh, brand in India. Well, uh, this is where we are. Uh, this is how we are on the map. I'm not putting it out because the Indian map is going to get uh, completely occupied with the different colors that you see here. We have our, our units and presence uh, all across India. I won't get into this much at this moment. And let's just deep dive into digital. What exactly is digital? Is it some kind of hybrid fruit? Well, I don't want to disappoint you because uh, I'm not going to be discussing uh, exotic fruits today. Instead, what we'll be doing is exploring the exciting and innovative approach of combining the best of both the worlds, the digital and the uh, physical learning that we have. We'll be learning how digital learning is actually changing the way we learn things today and giving us a completely new perspective of, of what it means to be a lifelong learner or a you know, continuous learner. That's what we put it as. So 
let's put our textbooks away. Let's step away from our, uh, our, our classrooms because what we're going to do right now is step on a journey uh, that is going to be with discovery and we're going to be learning more and more engaging or interactive and dare to say fun ways of learning. From educational games to interactive textbooks, we'll explore how digital learning is actually changing the way we learn and uh, it gives us a new perspective on what it means to be a lifelong partner uh, learner. So let's sit back, let's relax, let's prepare to have our minds blown right now as we dive into this digital world of learning. How many of you have actually, uh, do you remember this game called Hopscotch? And the picture is definitely evident. And who remembers playing Hopscotch as a child? And please don't give me any gender bias uh, replies. I myself loved Hopscotch when I was young. Hopscotch is a great example of how digital and physical elements can really work together to create a fun and engaging learning experience. Uh, think about it. When you when you play hopscotch, you're using your physical skills like jumping, balancing, coordination, and things like that way. But you're also learning about the numbers. You're seeing the numbers on your screen. You're learning about patterns. You're learning about strategy. And every step and jump that you make, you're, you're ensuring that you want to pass and come back to the original point without actually uh, moving around. So now taking the same idea of Hopscotch and applying it in a digital learning tool. For example, there are interact interactive apps and games that allow kids to play Hopscotch on their tablets and smartphones itself. They can customize the game. They can choose different levels of difficulty. They can even track the progress and their achievements on that particular app itself. And by combining the physical and digital elements of Hopscotch, what we are doing is we are creating a new type of learning experience. And this experience is not just fun, but it's also effective. This is one example. I can think of uh, a lot of examples that you can actually go through for, for uh, you know, comparing it. But let's talk about blended learning and digital learning. What's the difference? Because whenever we talk digital, a lot of people think about it and associate digital learning with blended learning. We have been using the words blended learning for over two decades now. In fact, we all have some kind of blended learnings right now in our own organizations, I'm sure. But what's the difference between blended and digital? Uh, Digital is relatively a new approach of educa to education and it combines the best of aspects of digital and physical learning experiences. It's a hybrid method that blends the use of digital technology with traditional classroom teaching methods and it creates a seamless and integrated uh, learning experience. Now both blended and physical uh, digital approaches include the traditional face-to-face -face methods along with digital tools and resources. But the key difference is that blended learning typically refers to a mix of traditional classroom-based teaching with online or digital elements, such as self-paced e-learning modules, virtual classrooms, uh, multimedia resources. And this approach is designed to basically provide learners with a more flexible and personalized experience that combines the best of both worlds. Digital learning, on the other hand, it takes blended learning to the next step and a little further by integrating the physical and digital elements into a seamless learning experience. It combines both uh, physical and digital resources and it creates an immersive. I like you to remember this word because this is the word that is that is associated with digital, an immersive and interactive learning experience. Now the goal is to foster creativity. It is to foster collaboration and is also to foster innovation. Let's think about it as a slice of pizza or, or, or a pizza. Now the physical digital approach is a fusion of technology and traditional learning methods using examples of digital tools and physical activities in a seamless way to enhance the learning experience. But why am I reading that? That's all already on your screen. Well, let's put the pizza together. You have the dough and that's at the bottom of the pizza. The dough turns into crust once you put it in the oven and the toppings that are there over the dough, that's what adds flavor to your pizza, right? Now, digital is like the pizza. The toppings are the digital and the crust is physical. The digital part 
that is the cheese. It melts over the pizza and the fidgetal part that is the crust. It holds everything together. Now, just like how cheese, the toppings, the Hawaiian toppings and the, the supreme uh, pizza toppings and everything that uh, that is with the crust complement each other, the crust and the toppings, fidgetal learning combines the best of both worlds and it enhances the learning experience. So if you ask me, Elton, which one's better? Is uh, physical learning better? Is digital learning better? Is fidgetal better? I, my question to you is, how do you like your pizza? Do you like your pizza with the crust or without the crust? Both are needed, right, to enjoy your meal. So the fidgetal approach is the new age approach. And by doing this, what you're going to do is you're going to be enhancing. You're going to be immersing into the whole area of learning in a in a brand new, interesting way. Now, post our COVID era around the world, 2020 had emerged as one of the most challenging years in many of our lifetimes, right? And this has also made the L&D teams across the industries one of the most sort of uh, uh, departments. Ask L&D person, any, any, any organization about L&D. Before COVID, I would say, had a little lesser importance and people said that okay fine training karna hi hai. we have to do our training but the trainings took an unprecedented high during the COVID era at ahll itself our trainings multiplied threefold and we ensured that we reached people even though they were working from home or they were working at the hospital in various places where there was social distancing happening the learning started improving and, and people were learning much more. We were, we were able to reach this thing. So the, the COVID-19 pandemic actually has forced many educators to adopt the digital tools and remote learning uh, methods, uh, making digital learning uh, a necessity uh, for many. That being said, everyone had to adapt to a blended learning approach. Uh, and we sought different ways to make our training more uh, effective and sought after. And many of our employees, even though they were not very tech savvy, started to learn how to use online platforms. And we took advantage of that. We took advantage of this training. We taught them first how to learn, uh, how to use the digital platform, how to use uh, tech uh, and become savvy with it. And then now it has become a piece of cake for us to just tell them, come online, we're having a training. So digital learning, blended learning has, has, has gained popularity for a few reasons. First, it allows personalized learning experience and it caters to a variety of learning styles. Second, it makes learning more uh, fun. It makes more uh, makes it more interactive, and this basically in, uh, increases engagement and interaction. Uh, interaction. So we say learning should be fun, and uh, this is a, a quote from Ferris Bowler's uh, Day Off book. It says, "Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could actually miss it." Now, the traditional learning methods can be boring at times. It can be engaging, uh, unengaging at times. It leads to maybe a lower retention. The motivation can be a little low. For example, let's take, I mean, how many of you have gone through a posh training or a whistleblower training or a code of conduct training, IT security training, the other mandatory tra training that has to take place every year. Elton, what is the status? Uh, where are we standing on the mandatory trainings? And we always insist that everyone needs to go through it. And a lot of them don't really enjoy if it's a classroom training. The digital approach, however, combines these digital and physical learning to create a more engaging and playful experience. Think of it as a game uh, or a gamification that you could actually go through with with Posh. It, it gives you certain situations, and you could you could choose choose the correct answer. There are there are a lot of apps that that are something like uh, uh, on the on the on the lines of Kon Banega Karupati or Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and uh, these kind of uh, apps basically help you to choose the right answers, gain a few points, uh, score on a leaderboard, and that's how you move. Uh, fast and you don't you don't you 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 can't stop around once in a while uh, because life is moves, moving uh, pretty fast and as it moves you you need to enjoy it. So what's the excitement in uh, fictional learning? Let's uh, let's look at the various things and there are a couple of videos also in this. So the first thing that we see is virtual field trips or uh, things like that. But let's let's take uh, an example of how virtual field trips actually take place.
I'm the head of education here at Johnson & Johnson Institute and our responsibility is to train surgeons all around the world. Today we have a real problem that on a global basis there's not enough access to safe healthcare because we don't have enough surgeons trained. We are so excited about the Oculus Quest and it's simple. You want your residents at the first time they touch a patient to be really ready for that moment. And that's what virtual reality has allowed us to do. You now have the mobility to take it closer to the surgeon so they don't have to travel. And with the hand tracking, you are going to get performance feedback and metrics that are really gonna help them understand how they're doing that procedure. Traditionally, we would have spent two to three hours in hands-on training that can now be completely replaced with a one hour session in Oculus. We really aspire to be that trusted partner and educator with our healthcare professionals all over the world. And it's critical that we have partners like Oculus to create that wonderful platform where we can then deliver our virtual reality content to anybody, anywhere, and at any time. So that's how Oculus does it with Johnson & Johnson, and uh, they've, they've included virtual field trips for practically almost all the trainings that they do uh, in, in their thing, making it much more interesting. Things that would take hours to learn. I mean, it, it's happening uh, in a matter of, uh, uh, you know, or, or days to learn. It's happening in, in, in minutes or, or, or hours right now. The next thing that uh, that really causes excitement is AR simulations, and we'll see a few videos uh, in the coming slides uh, and to learn what exactly AR is, augmented reality. Uh, gamification, I already spoke about gamification, and uh, during COVID, a lot of the organizations had used free platforms such as Kahoot, and uh, we still use Kahoot for a lot of things, and a lot of gamifications that can be used for um, you know mandate trainings which are uh, monotonous uh, which are not very very interesting you can definitely you know make it interesting with the gamification that is uh, available online so we see that people get engaged because of uh, gamification engages learners you can you can actually assess them and you can have a competition between them definitely your training engagement is increasing by 60 percent you have people doing it i wish i could do one right now and 80 percent of employees prefer game-based learning over anything else that's that's uh, proven uh, the next is the hands-on experience that we have we have a small video for that too and this is from Nike. This is what our the, their customers actually go through. All this to just buy a shoe. Thank you.
we see that um, your your hands on experiments that is being done with customers. Customers are also starting to learn about uh, what we have or, or in what what the uh, you know products are available. They learn about it while they're buying it. They can compare it with other products. They can do so many things. The next thing is the digital games, the interactive training modules that are also there. And um, this is something which which is also making digital education really ex uh, 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 exciting. Uh, virtual tours and online simulations, and this is something, for example, a customer service simulation could allow employees to actually practice handling customer service uh, uh, complaints, uh, and they can resolve the issues. Uh, there's another video which is coming up where Hilton is doing this in their training programs, and, and they have simulations of how an irate pass, uh, uh, customer can actually come to you and what you could say. So you have the options of actually being in a virtual reality uh, you know, system to understand these things. Uh, there's a video of here on 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 the thing. I I like to show you this uh, video on YouTube as well as to how tours and online simulations can be done. And uh, if I click that, introducing India's first okay, and only. I already have it here, so smart red mattress. This mattress gives you softness and firmness at the same time. Isn't that cool? What's even cooler? It has okay. cooler. It has 2500 plus air channels, so you don't have sweaty. So this is Taj Mahal, and uh, if you actually look at this, it has a virtual reality thing, which is not actually playing right now. Yeah, here it is. So this is this is something where you can actually watch and uh, this is online, but you can still see exactly what is around Taj Mahal. You can actually look at that. That's a live video, but this is actually VR in play. You can see your sky. How is it? You can see how the fountains are. Okay, or people walking around. You can go closer to the uh, thing. And this is just a video but it's still allowing you to do this. But if you're actually in, immersed into a virtual tour, you can actually zoom up even into uh, the minute cuts that are there in Taj Mahal to see exactly how they're going. I won't say much about this, but that's typically how a virtual um, um, uh, tour or an online simulation would work with VR. Now, how immersive is immersive? And uh, I'd like you to imagine learning uh, learning about the history of pizza since we already spoke about pizzas earlier. Uh, while you're eating a pizza, you can actually learn about the history. You can explain, you can explore what's the significance of that eatable triangle. You can see the science behind its ingredients. You can see the math that's involved uh, in preparation and all this while you wear your VR set and enjoy your slice. And or how about uh, an augmented reality to si simulate your science experiments? You can visit the solar system, okay, the universe, learn about it. You can see Chandran uh, live in play. You can see exactly what's happening through this immersive technology. Have you ever thought of bringing historical landmarks maybe to life? Maybe the same virtual reality tour that I just showed you online. Uh, you have uh the augmented reality with uh vr and er all all put together and you visiting taj mahal and there you are uh, as you enter the app you can talk to uh, maybe shah jahan who's depicted by uh you know something right now we have even news channels with uh, ai being uh you know your news anchors you can you can have somebody tell you exactly the three 3d model or model of the structure it can tell you about the historic facts. It can take you uh, through the elements that are there and uh, you can visit the place and you don't need to give any, uh, you know, 500 rupee Chinese whisper uh, guide 500 rupees right now anymore. You will always be looking at something through your own eyes and learning at your own pace. That's how immersive immersive can get. Here's how a video which Siemens is actually bringing factory training and engineering to life.
Siemens is doing it. Uh, I think it's it's definitely causing a lot of ripple waves Siemens. in the organization. Ingenuity for life. Okay, now what are the physical resources that are used in digital learning? One is interactive surfaces, and this can be your touch screens, which you could be using. Uh, it could be interactive whiteboards that you're using. It could be interactive tables that could be you, you could be using. We have sensors like uh, data collection points. Uh, there, there are te temperature sensors. There are microphones that uh, use this motion sensors, uh, uh, microphones, and various things that actually capture uh, data so that you know you can actually learn through that. And then you have, uh, like I promised, AR tools or augmented reality tools. Now, augmented reality tools are cameras or sensors that overlay uh, the digital content in the physical world. So you have your AR headset, uh, you have your mobile app, and you use the AR technology. You can get into a, a physical place. You see what is there around you. At the same time, you see things that are uh, uh, digitally uh, uh, overlaid into that live scenario. For example, if you're in a simulation room like where I am right now, um, I'll be able to see the room physically with my set, but I'll also be able to see uh, things which are there digitally put, which is not uh, you know, actually physically present there. So in the same room, adding certain, certain things and then learning. Let's see how that happens uh, in a video. And this is a bottle of uh, Kentucky whiskey, which is there on the table. You wear your glasses and or, or you can do it with your phone. And just by putting it over the bottle, you can actually see what, what happens. That's a bottle of shampoo. So packaging is so easy. It tells you about the whole shampoo. And by just placing your camera onto the thing or your, your headset or your... Bottle talks to you. The interactive layer is added to any product that you're actually physically holding or looking at. So that's AR basically. So if you understood clearly, you have a bottle in front of you, you put on your headset or your camera and you put it on top of that. And uh, through a scanner, it actually tells you everything about that product and you can learn anything that you like. And then we have VR, uh, the virtual reality tools. These are immersively uh, digital environments that, uh, are, that go with VR headsets and VR rooms. Uh, typically, if you've played, uh, if you go to the mall, you have IB cricket going on right now in most of the malls. You have uh, something to uh, you can play cricket in a stadium just by wearing your your uh, VR headset. You can look around, you can see people cheering for you. They have your names in the stand and you can do things like that way. There's, there's another video for this as well. Every day at the corporate office, we make decisions that impact the team members at the hotel. So we really needed to make sure that our corporate team members understand the complexity of working in a hotel. Oculus for Business has really shifted the way we work. We can truly upskill team members faster and really focus on empathy building, which was a game changer for us. We then said we can use this tool to be able to really help our team members practice different scenarios of building empathy with our guests and make sure that we are delivering best in class service. Hi, I'm here to check in. If we were to try to do this in a traditional setting, when you have 400,000 team members, that is not something that comes in an inexpensive way for us, and nor do I think it's realistic. Every time there's been a significant advancement in the way you interact with computers, something great happens. So when the Quest came out, it was groundbreaking for us because just like that, you have 60 OF possibilities for your experiences. Having all this available to you allows you to concentrate in what's most important, that getting what the client sees when they close their eyes and making it happen. To me, virtual reality is absolutely the future of learning. It just genuinely immerses the team member in the experience. Once you see this and can experience how much it can build empathy and change behavior, it's really the best tool by which we can simulate a real experience. When clients ask, how can we develop this? How can we create this for the masses? 
Now we have an answer for them, the quest. So that's how Hilton does it. So just in a nutshell, while AR is enhancing the real world with digital content, VR fully immerses yourself into the real world uh, 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 and replaces the real world with a, a simulated world. So that's how the difference is. Now, let's understand the digital resources used in digital learning. Uh, we have the learning management systems, you have online courses, you have videos and animations and interactive exercises and games. Uh, LMSs are used basically for delivery of learning content, while online courses can be digital courses that are delivered online. Uh, Apollo, for example, has Medvasity that we use for something like this. Uh, there are there are there are sites like Coursera, Udemy, EDX, uh, edX, uh, you know, education experience that can actually help you to you know learn things uh, online itself. You also have videos and animations, the use of video and audio elements to convey your, your, uh, your information. It includes instructional videos and animated explainers. We do a lot of that stuff at Apollo. And then you have the interactive uh, exercises and games. These are digital resources that provide an interactive, engaging way for people to learn well. I'd like to tell you about this uh, place. In fact, from the window that I see here in front of me, there's this building on top of which uh, uh, spoken English classes take place. And uh, all of these people uh, for 3000 rupees come and do a seven or 10 day course with this person. And they're right on top of the terrace learning English. Now imagine that you move from that to something like this. But imagine that a language class where, where students are using augmented reality apps to actually practice their conversational skills. They can see virtual models of other speakers and they, they respond to the questions or prompts in real time. And by providing a more dynamic or interactive learning experience, we're making language learning more fun and engaging. And if you think that this is not happening and it's, it's too far in the future, the Indian government right now is doing this. For example, uh, just to let you know, the Indian government is the highest spender on technology or, and AI in India at the moment. Now imagine a virtual reality uh, simulation that allows medical students, for example, to practice surgical procedures before they actually work on real time patients. There's no more guinea pig uh, thing happening here. And by providing a realistic and interactive learning experience, we are preparing students for challenges uh, that they'll face in the real world. So let's embrace that uh, pizza of education, that, that slice of pizza of, and explore the endless uh, possibilities of digital. Now, companies are already doing this uh, in training. We have Walmart, we have McDonald's, Nike that is already doing it. Uh, Nike's flagship store in uh, uh, New York uses digital screens uh, for a personalized uh, shopping experience like I just showed you. We have McDonald's, there's a video here to show you exactly how they do it. McDonald's started a virtual training program in 2020 for all their employees in the Czech Republic. Let's take a closer look at how to take a two hour strenuous task from managers and turn it into 20 minutes of fun. The whole employee training has moved to the virtual reality app that is based on a 3D model of the real restaurant in Prague. To ensure its maximum believability, we made all rendered graphics photorealistic and high level. At this moment, the VR app contains the first training process, initial orientation. This lecture gives employees a tour of the restaurant, shows the lobby, front counter, big cafe, kitchen premises with dry storeroom, coolers, freezers, and also the manager and crew rooms. The whole training lecture is divided into two modules, learn and replicate. The learn module communicates important information via visual elements audio commentary and mainly through personal experience, which is the main benefit of virtual reality. Users feel almost like physically present in the restaurant. Each section then describes specific job positions and basic rules of operating that every employee must know. The following replicate module checks the adoption of the new skills and information through gamified tests that increase both attractivity of the experience and user engagement. The user is becoming an active part of the training and not only its passive observer.
All data about users' behavior in the app are collected and analyzed before uploading to the My McDonald's portal, where managers can access real-time reports about the performance of employees and restaurants. Employee training in VR is an effortless innovation with outstanding results. Will you give it a try? Seems really interesting, right? I mean, a place, a franchise store like McDonald's in Czech is actually doing this and uh, the whole store is all simulated. So you can actually go through your experience of working in the store before you actually get on the floor. So what an induction program, great. So how do we make the right balance? How do we choose uh, what learning do we need to actually choose? So um, the picture says it all. And I'd like you to imagine that you're going on a road trip and uh, you're going on a road trip with your friends and you're like, excited to hit the road and explore new places. But hold on a minute. When you have to decide this trip, do you just get in the car and say, hey guys, let's drive aimlessly? Well, not. I'm sure it's, it's not that. You have a destination in your mind. You have a map. You have a GPS to guide you. And you know the sites and stops that you want to stop by. And in other words, you have a clear objective for your trip. The same goes for learning. Before you embark on, le on a learning journey, you need to know basically where you're headed and what you want to achieve with your learning. That's where identifying learning objectives comes in. It's like your GPS for learning and it helps you to stay on track and reach your destination. So let's put, in, put on our uh, learning hats and explore how to identify these objectives to decide which route we want to take. Is it the digital? Is it the uh, digital? Is it the physical? Or are we going with all? Let's just make most of this, uh, uh, this, this whole road trip. So we need to identify the learning objectives. And the first thing that we need to do is skill-based learning. For example, healthcare professionals learning a new medical procedure. It involves physical practice and online modules, right? So uh, what we need to basically come up with training programs for healthcare uh, professionals that, le that learn to perform a new pro procedure before they actually get on, on, on the site. Uh, Information-based learning, for example, cyber cybersecurity can actually be something which you can you can learn uh, online before you can uh, you can take it uh, into your own whole platform of the organization. You have experiential uh, experiential learning. That's team building programs or seven habits programs. That these are things that you know need the experience, and I'm sure that you cannot do it online. So you have to do it in person. And then you have soft skill development, like for example, communication, leadership, EI. This can be a blend of both, You like how Hilton is doing it right now. But there are certain times when you feel that, no, this needs a physical touch. It needs that trainer's touch so that it can actually, uh, you know, uh, ensure that the people are developed as per exactly what it want, what we want. We want it to be customized because it takes a lot lot to actually develop a program on VR. So after you develop it, you still want some more customization. Your blended learning does come into picture. The second thing that you need to do is assess the learners. Uh, see whether your identified participants can actually learn in the way that you're, you're, you're teaching them. Their accessibility to learning. Are they are they open to classroom? Are they are they field agents? Are they sales agents who um, are, are not indoors? Uh, uh, you know, in your office, and they don't really have time. Do they need uh, to have uh, flexibility? And you have to assess them to understand what exactly uh, exactly do they have as an accessibility to learning, and then. Uh, the technology capabilities of the learner also, whether they are going to be tech savvy to understand that. So you, it might need a blended learning to actually teach them how to go through it. So you have to assess them, uh, identify what kind of people they are, and then decide the next step, which is the delivery mode, whether it's going to be physical, digital, or it's blended. And then select the, di the, the digital and physical resources. Are you going to be using videos? Are you going to be using simulations? Are you going to be using interactive whiteboards or virtual or AR tools or sensors or interactive uh, surfaces? Then create a kind of uh, a schedule. Uh, ensure that the training is carried out. Monitor and evaluate. Assess if the learning is working for you or if you need to change the approach. And don't feel uh, bad that the that approach was not good. If, if you feel that the 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 online uh, module did not work out and it needs a touch of personal please go for it and change that now moving from the as is to the future that's the digital learning 
you need to assess the learning needs before deciding on a learning a blended learning approach. You need to assess your learning needs. Consider your training objectives, like I said, audience delivery options and then deliver. The second is develop a blended learning strategy. And once you've assessed your learning uh, needs, develop a blended learning strategy, determine the delivery mode or the method uh, that each of the module uh, needs to be presented in and decide how much training will be delivered online and how much will be delivered in a classroom. Uh, create your digital content. That is something that goes uh, without explanation. Identify your right technology. We spoke on that. Uh, train your trainers. Your trainers are going to be assets, uh, and that is something which will never be replaced. For example, many people have asked me, do you think that trainers will be replaced by AI or uh, digital learning or digital learning that is already there? I say that no, I don't think so. I don't think they'll ever be replaced. But trainers that do not adapt to AI or digital learning will be replaced by people who don't. Uh, sorry, the other way around. Uh, so definitely train your trainers and ensure that they are equipped to understand your uh, your LMS platforms, to understand the blended technology that you're bringing in. Ensure that they know it because they are the future. They, they are the ones that are going to take the organization to the next level. And then finally, evaluate and refine. What are the advantage? You have reduced travel costs, your flexibility and accessibility, higher retention rates, uh, scalability, and that's not all. With blended learning, you can actually save on employee on time. And uh, instead of pulling employees away from work uh, for a full day of training, you can now spread out the learning over time. And instead of renting out a conference room, no non-availability of training rooms in your in your organization, you now have everything taken care of at this moment. So doing the math by implementing blended learning, you can cut travel expenses, conference expenses, room rentals, fancy training materials, and you can reduce the employee downtime and increase the productivity. So it's a win-win situation and uh, your CFO for sure is going to be uh, calling you a hero and thanking you for the whole thing. So that's the end of it. But uh, before I end, I have a little riddle for you. And this is why did the computer go to school? And the answer is to get a USB degree. I know that's a bad one, but to, this is just a little uh, a little tech humor that I'm throwing in here. But in all, in, in all seriousness, as we wrap up today's session, let's remember that the future of learning lies in the perfect blend of learning uh, of digital and physical approaches. So embrace this fusion of technology and tradition. And uh, another little story before I end, and this one is about, about aliens. Uh, once upon a time, there was a group of aliens who came to Earth and they wanted to learn about the planet. They visited many countries all across and they observed various cultures and they spoke to different people. Uh, but no matter where they went, all they couldn't understand was one thing. Why do humans take themselves so seriously? They saw how uh, we rush around. They saw how we stress on work. We, they saw our deadlines. They saw our responsibilities. And they saw how we worry about our appearance, about our status, about our possessions. And they saw how we argue, how we fight, and how we hold grudges over the small things. So they decided to go back to their own uh, planet. And while they were going, they said, let's just stop at the park and let's see what those kids are doing. And when they saw those kids playing in the park, they asked, they saw that they were really, really happy and they were, they were, they were laughing and joking and they were, they were, you know, playing around. So they asked the kids, what's the secret to your happiness? So the kid, the kids uh, that were in the park, they laughed and said, just play. And that's it, my friends. The key to a happy and successful life is playfulness. Learning is no exception. Uh, when we approach learning with a playful mindset, we become more curious, we become more engaged, we become more creative. We're not afraid to make mistakes. We don't have we don't have any inhibitions of trying something new. We enjoy the process of learning. So let's not take ourselves so seriously. Let's embrace a playful approach to learning. And uh, with a playful thought in mind, let's watch this last video uh, before the thank you slide. Mm -hmm.
So let's go play everyone. Uh, the world is out there. Again, I'm just repeating the sentence. AI is never going to take over uh, our worlds, but if we do not adopt AI, people who are adopting AI will definitely take over our worlds. So with that, uh, thank you uh, team Medlearn for this uh, amazing opportunity to speak to everyone. I just stopped sharing my screen so that it's back to Varun. Varun, you're the man. Thank you so much, sir. It was uh, indeed an honor uh, listening to you and uh, I'm sure listening about uh, the pizza and virtual reality. I believe if I'll start having my pizza virtually, I'm going to adhere strictly to my diet plan. Thank you so much for uh, amazing insights. I would be opening the session uh, for uh, the question and answers. If you have uh, uh, any questions, you can drop into the comment section. So we have already got a question on uh, any initiative that you have taken to make digital learning more fun. Yes, I, I mentioned it. Um, definitely digital learning is something that we, we use, use it through, uh, first of all, uh, various ways that we've used. Um, through During COVID, we were completely blended. Uh, we did visit places, we solidarily um, uh, went to our centers, we continued being there, but for those that we could not visit, which were remote, uh, we did have a blended learning. During these times, we had a lot of quizzes that actually uh, that took place with Kahoot, uh, a lot of gamification that happened there. We used uh, Mentometer for uh, um, a lot of lot of stuff that we actually made uh, training interesting. But the main idea here is that what what can you do to uh, make your training interesting? Um, like for example, this was a webinar, but if it was a training uh, program that I was actually taking with everyone, every step of the way, I would actually include uh, people to start speaking about it. So the more engagement that's the more uh, the more interesting your training is going to become and when you use virtual means like uh, uh, these kind of things uh, definitely so what we also do is we have certain things on ms teams we may not have uh, our own gamification platform but we have uh, uh, ms teams where we actually create kind of quizzes on ms forms and after every training uh, we we send this out to everyone to you know blend their ideas and give their their thoughts about it so definitely that kind of helped us a lot and yes we are developing our own uh, uh, programs right now for certain mandatory programs like your posh and whistleblower these are things which are getting into more for gamification kind of uh, module that we're actually looking into right now uh, thank you sir another question on uh, there are challenges in implementing hybrid learning as many healthcare professionals feel that training on core clinical topics through digital learning can reduce the efficiency. So how to overcome that mindset and what do you think about? So it? you you said it right, uh, Varun, you, you use the word, how do we change that mindset? It is all about mindset. Right now you're, you're looking at it as a challenge. Don't look at it as a challenge. Uh, right now, most of the uh, the the organizations of the healthcare organizations in the world are actually practicing medicine uh, through VR. Okay, it is not something uh, which is which is uh, which is a challenge at the moment. It it helps you to uh, play around before you actually play uh, on on a, on a patient. So definitely, it's implementing hybrid learning is no more challenge. It's something that we have to change our own mindsets. And one one we once we overcome that mindset you'll be able to overcome everything else and you'll be able to adapt that in your in your day to day life. So just rub it off as a as, as a challenge and, uh, you know, embrace a digital learning rather than, you know, think of it as uh, a challenge. Sir, I have personally seen that HR and L&D folks in a lot of organizations, they are still pushing the, uh, you know, employees to log in to their LMSs and you know, then yes. uh, just uh, complete an assignment. So another question on that, that how can hybrid learning help medical professionals especially balance their clinical responsibilities with ongoing education and training? So one word for that is flexibility. Uh, you don't know when a patient is going to be coming into your clinic or if you're in a, in a hospital practicing, you're going to be having 
uh, hundreds of patients come in and you may not even have uh, time to have a cup of tea. So flexibility is what uh, hybrid learning will actually give you the uh, opportunity to do. Uh, because once you finish, you have the flexibility of learning uh, whenever you want to. If it's a weekend, if it's your day off, it's an evening. Uh, a lot of doctors I know, for example, uh, personally, who I know about, even after seeing about 100 patients, they would go back home and do their studies for their fellowship or for their master's and things like that way. Uh, if that can be done, you can be flexible to learn hybrid learning any time of the day, any time of the night, any time you don't get sleep, any time you want to learn something, any time you want to have fun. Okay. And I think I answered uh, the next sir, question also, question which I... is the strategy on how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And sir, uh, one question which I would like to tweak a bit that uh, how to reduce resistance in the staff for digital learning. So as you can see now, hospital has HIES, now they have HRMS, they have a recruitment portal, they have a separate software for the finance, separate uh, yeah. you know, SAP software for, and even yeah. a software for the radiological intervention. So with so many technologies, sometimes HR and ND folks, they uh, face this challenge. Have I lost signal or uh... new software uh, which comes? So okay. how to reduce that? I, I think you broke up in between, staff. but I kind of understood Especially. your your question. Uh, you did break off in between, but you, uh, if I have to understand that, you you say that there are so many software, so many digital platforms, and there's yeah. a resistance from from uh, your employees okay. to actually come. Right. Absolutely, uh, I have the answer for that, and I think it is to not just rely on digital. Uh, it's to choose your uh, your platform first to be actually uh, both physical and uh, digital. When I say that, I mean there should be a soft touch. Like for example, when we were introducing uh, something here like gamification, we actually had everyone come into the room and displayed what can be done on that platform. And by the end of it, everyone was so comfortable and they, they all wanted to have a, a go at it and learn. So. Uh, I would say do, uh, uh, you know, in-person demonstrations or demos for whatever you're doing. Uh, let people go through it and see how exciting it is because they they hear the word digital and they might get a little apprehensive to actually deep dive into something like that way. But if if they actually immerse with your, you and uh, go through your demo, uh, it, it's like it's like uh, painting a, a wall. Have you have you ever seen somebody painting your wall at home? I'm sure you have. Whenever they do the painting, you feel like painting yourself, right? It's exactly the same way. If you want someone to learn uh, uh, your your platform, demonstrate it. Show the fun. Show the enthusiasm that you're actually uh, having in this whole uh, process of you know learning. And once they see that they're going to be adapted and once you once they're there, they might just get totally immersed with it and they might not want any other training except, uh, you know, blended physical, digital learning. Yeah. Thank you. So one last question uh, by Miss Mary in the present scenario of training in healthcare, what is the percentage digital learning share? OK. So I know Dr. Reddy Labs has already introduced it uh, in, in, in most of its trainings across the network. They're also going into uh, government schools and then giving this. Uh, we're not in, we, we don't have a percentage per se as to what exactly is the scenario right now in India. If you ask me that, I'm not uh, uh, fully aware of that. But government schools, I'm talking about uh, government schools in remote villages are using uh, VR. Google it. I, I, in fact, I should have shown that video to you all uh, while I was doing my research for this uh, this uh, program. And uh, there are there are there are schools in in remote villages that are actually <laughs> having VR headsets learning about uh, the dissection of a frog. Uh, you know, I mean, and imagine, I mean, I, I don't like the sight of a frog. I, I hated it when I actually had to go into, uh, you know, a classroom uh, in, into the lab to actually cut something on that way. But uh, 
you can do this all online. You can do it through VR and uh, definitely it is something which is already in the system right now. Uh, a lot of international schools that you have right now in, 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 in Hyderabad, at least I know of, all are using VR. My daughter goes to a school right now where she 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 had VR in her school and a lot of schools. So whether it's government schools or uh, international schools, all are getting it on. And um, there are a lot of things. Uh, games are getting into VR. I, I don't think uh, learning is far away from that. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, that's all about uh, the questions for today's session. I once again, uh, on behalf of the entire Midland team, I am honored to uh, have your session today. Thank you so much to uh, all the participants for joining us. Um, you for more information, you can reach out uh, to us at uh, info.com. You can uh, for upcoming webinars for the uh, recording of this particular session, you can reach out to us on our LinkedIn page Midland. Uh, I once again thank you uh, for participating in today's session. I wish you all uh, uh, a wonderful uh, learning experience ahead. Uh, Elder sir, thank you so much once again. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Once again, thanks to the complete MedLearn team and you.